Good afternoon and welcome to the Ripple Podcast. My name is Jim Lang. I'm the Director of Guest Services here at America's Keswick. And each week we're going to be bringing you a testimony of um, one of the men in the colony, a student at Barbara's Place, or one of our staff members. And one of the most uh, dynamic things about our ministry is that uh, a man or woman comes here and their life is radically changed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then they get sent out to their families, their communities, their churches, and, and God does a work through those individuals in those communities. And so we want to give you a glimpse into that. And so it's my privilege to, to introduce you to today, uh, Stephen. Uh, Stephen uh, is a recent graduate of the Colony of Mercy. He's now in our discipleship program. And so uh, this past Sunday, Stephen graduated from our four-month program. And so congratulations, Stephen, and, and welcome. We're, we're glad that you're uh, joining us this, this afternoon. Um, so why don't we start off by you kind of telling us a little bit about your life before you came to America's Keswick. All right. Uh, well, thank you for having me, and it's an honor to be able to do this. Um, up until about the age of seven, I was raised primarily by my mom. Um, at the age of seven is when she met the man that I called my father. And um, they were both awesome parents, but uh, they were working so hard to make sure that we had everything that we needed that it felt like they weren't home. And uh, even when they were home, it was, uh, they were tired, cleaning up after us, fixing things that we had broken. And um, it's just, yeah, it's so, I spent a lot of time with my friends. And uh, at the age of 13, my friends and I started experimenting with uh, cigarettes, alcohol, marijuana, and um, just pretty much teaching ourselves how to live, so to speak. And um, about four years later, I uh, discovered cocaine and spiraled completely out of control. Um, by the age of 20, I uh, joined the Navy. And by the grace of God, I was able to step away from the drugs and everything just to be able to do that. And um, I got married at the age of 21. Um, the marriage didn't last long. We've, first compromise was with alcohol and um, through that bad decisions and uh, infidelities. So uh, I ended up going back to cocaine and spiraled even more out of control. Um, five years later, ended up getting out of the Navy because of that. And um, after I got out of the Navy, I moved down to Florida um, where I met Amber, who was the mother of our three beautiful children. Um, so that was about the age of 25. And then five years later, uh, once again, compromises with alcohol and just uh, bad decisions led me to a point where I was uh, barricaded in my home. Amber wanted nothing to do with me. I was barely seeing my kids. I didn't have electric, water, um, a job. My car had been repossessed. My house was in foreclosure and it, it was just, I felt like I had lost everything that meant anything to me. And I just, I wanted it all to end. Um, I was using crystal meth. I am just absolutely doing nothing with myself at all. It's a very, very dark place. And so in, in all the chaos you kind of mentioned briefly, um, but what are some of the effects that had on, on your relationships, your addiction had on your relationships? Wow. Um, uh, on just about every single one of my relationships it had either destroyed it, blinded me to it, or um, seriously damaged it, uh, with the exception of the relationship that I had with my parents. Okay. And so your parents kind of play a part into how you, how you got here, but um, tell everyone how you heard about America's Keswick. My parents were actually down in Florida visiting, and um, they became aware of exactly how out of control I was. And they had mentioned to me that my uncle had actually come through the Colony of Mercy here at America's Keswick back in 2005, I think it was. That's awesome. You can kind of see your, your uncle came through, his life was changed, and, and God then used your uncle's story to kind of bring you here. Now, did you have a relationship with your, with your uncle? I did. He was actually on one of the major role models in my life. And, um, yeah, I, I remember picking him up from the airport. Uh, when he got out of the Navy and then learning most of what I know from him 
um, watching him go through his addiction. And then, uh, you know, after 2005, it was just completely different. Wow. So you hear about the, the colony of mercy. What actually, what was the driving force behind you actually coming here? What made you decide that I need to go there? Like I said, I spiraled pretty much completely out of control and I was in that dark place. Um, when I was sitting there isolated, you know, absolutely convinced that I had lost everything and realizing that I, I was surrounded by things that didn't mean anything to me. Uh, God spoke to me and said, Steve, you, you got to make a change here. You got to make a change. So you've been here for four months, uh, just graduated this past Sunday. And so um, what are some of the ways God has been working in your heart and life? <laughs> He's completely transformed me. Um, everything from the way that I think, um, my heart's desires, and just e even little, little things in my life. Um, for example, I used to hate reading. Now, you got you to gotta press me for me to put a book down. Um, when I would read into the Bible, nothing in the scripture, it made sense to me. Now the messages are practically jumping off the page at me. Um, it's, it's just amazing. Things that used to make me mad don't make me mad anymore. Um, the sinful desires of my flesh are fading away more and more every day. Yeah, it's, it's just wonderful. And so these changes in your life and, um, you know, how have you noticed uh, those changes affect your relationships in your life? Um, relationships. The most important relationship that I believe it's affected is my relationship with God. Um, I, him and I eat breakfast, lunch and dinner together. Right. And he's the first conversation that I have when I wake up. And the last conversation I have before I go to sleep. And um, let's see, my, uh, my relationship with my parents and my family has supported me through this. Um, my friends are proud of me. Um, you remember me talking about Amber and how she wanted nothing to do with me. Um, at this point, um, it has not only led her to become baptized with what God is doing in her life along with what he's doing in mine, but her and I are actually back on track and looking forward to being married later on down the line, um, raising our children in a home that serves God, like it's mentioned in Joshua twenty four fifteen, And uh, there's other relationships that aren't quite there yet, like the relationship with my sister and um, her husband, who was my, my best friend um, in childhood. But I, I think that through uh, time and consistency, that those relationships will be restored as well. So, so we at least know for the next three months, you're going to be uh, kind of staying here, allowing God to uh, to reveal himself to you a little bit more. But, um, you know, God has kind of uh, shown you some things over the last few months. Why don't you share with everyone kind of the call God has put on your life? So um, one, one night in prayer, uh, without any sort of prior thoughts to this whatsoever at all, uh, I was just sitting there talking with God and all of a sudden I heard uh, become a pastor. So uh, I've received a calling into pastorship. Um, more recently, I'm, I'm feeling a pull in my heart towards um, addiction ministries and um, addiction recovery ministries. So um, I don't know what that looks like later on down the line, but uh, I know as long as God's got his hand in it and I'm, I'm following him, it's going to be good. So as we, as we kind of wrap up here, if someone is watching this podcast who is uh, struggling with addiction or just, uh, just struggling with life in general, what is, what is something that you'd, that you'd say to them? If, if you're struggling with addiction, if you are at a point where you feel like you have no control, um, try, try and find a church. If there's a church near you, ask them for help. Seek God, ask God for help, ask him into your heart. And um, if you can, if you can find a way to get here, um, either to the Colony of Mercy or Barbara's Place and go through these programs here at America's Keswick, um, they'll change your life. If you, if you truly want it and you open your heart to God, 
He will use this place to transform your life. I'm a living testimony to that. Well, thank you, Stephen, for for sharing your your story. Uh, we're just so proud of you, and, and uh, I'm I'm excited to get to work alongside you for the next few months and to just see what God has for you. Um, we want to encourage you to to join us each week as we as we share these testimonies and. Um, uh, part of the idea behind the podcast is to, to create the ripple effect and, uh, and allow God to, to use these testimonies to uh, 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 just touch the hearts and lives of as many people as we can. And so we ask you to come alongside us and, and share these video testimonies. If it's touched your heart and life, we'd like to hear about it as well. And, and so comment on it. And, and we hope to see you back next week.